too. I like your hat, bro. Thanks, bro. I need some oil for my joints so I can yeah. go see the wizard. <laughs> you are the tin foil man. Broadcasting Not the live. tin man. The tin foil tin man. Tin foil man. That's correct. I am. It is, it's foil time, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's foil time. Before, before we begin, however, though. What? Um, it is always our quest. First of all, broadcasting yes. live from the treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. This is a knocked conscious episode. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Happy vacation day, bro. Today is Friday. It's Thursday. Thursday. November Gosh, the it. blah, blah, blah. 12th. I don't even know. 12th. Because I think it's Friday the 13th. Tomorrow. Yes. It is November 12th, 2020. Is that correct? Uh, it's still. Still in midst of this yes. stuff. We'll just <laughs> call it the stuff. But on the inter expressway over on the way over, it sure don't look like a pandemic, bro. There's all kinds of people out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been on the tweets lately. Stop it. You yeah, were? I've been self-promoting. You're crazy, bro. I know. It's crazy, right? Self-promoting. And what, I, what do I see is something about lockdown 2.0. What? What is lockdown 2.0? Is that uh, do you is think that I know? The U in the UK or Europe? I don't know. Or is that in the states? Do you want me to look it up? I, I don't have the I don't have the good I don't have the Your strength. Googles? I don't have the Googles. Correct. We are we are sans are laptop. You, are you are you are you beer Google free? This isn't this is not conscious. And and in the vein of not conscious, we've we've always talked about being better, sir. We have. I would like to share that last night I was not good. You weren't. I was not. What do you mean? And I have an apology. Do you to make. do you need to be spanked? No. Well, n not by you. <laughs> Thank God, because I'm not going to do it. But I would consider it from certain parties. Okay. Uh, but you pointed out uh, you were so kind and generous to uh, invite me to your casa yesterday si. to watch this movie about which we're going to speak. Yes, and this have documentary. amazing Chinese food. And have ridiculous Chinese food. It's better reheated in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. I eat so cold. Don't give a fuck. Uh, that too. It's just better, regardless, because oh. all the flavors get all. I agree. I like leftovers, bro. Yeah. Um, more seasoned or just more, it's more homogeneous. Yes. Or homogeneous, whichever way. Both of them. Or heterogeneous. Yeah, whichever, look, whichever way you decide, they're allowed to have choice. The, the spices are allowed to choose how they like. Whatever they like. Yeah. So in the vein of that, you invited me over and I met your friend. Yeah. Very good friend for the first time. This friend was Mackenzie. And she was so kind and sweet. And I was my good old narcissistic douchebag self. So I'd like to apologize to Mackenzie. <laughs> I believe Christopher pointed out that I spoke over her three or four or five times. It was Possibly. four times. And four I, times. Didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't say a word. You were kind. I let you, were, you oh, just gave run me more rampant. Rope. You just get let me get Unlike more Unlike the last time when you interrupted a friend, I got pissed. Right. But I was drunk. So that wasn't. It was 61% my fault and 48% Jim Beam's fault, and I'm really bad at math. Yes, I like 109%. It's kind of like the voter turnout in some states. Yes. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's the only political, that's as far as we're going to go. Um, but you no, know, to, to that end, I am a spaz and a narcissist, and I have a hard time filtering out the words from the head to the mouth, and like I just start. Blah, blah, blah. Why? Did we have to talk about this on the podcast? Why because I want to apologize. Why couldn't we just have this everyone. conversation before we started recording? I'm going to personally apologize to Mackenzie, but okay. I want to apologize on record for showing that I was not a good person and we're always trying to be better. And I'd like oh. to thank that you pointed out when you, this is what's great about you, man. This is why I love you. Cause you and I, <laughs> <'Cause> I point, <laughs> well, look, That's Oscar Wilde, very nice of me. Either, Oscar though. Wilde said it best. A true friend stabs you in the front. That's how it works, man. You told me, that I was be I was out of line, and I agree. I was out of line, so I apologize for that. But thank you. I'm trying every day to be better. I try. I just don't know if I'm getting there. I'm getting better with the apologies, though, for sure. Anyway, so over your house, what happened yesterday? I, I saw Lego strewn across your table. Leg Legos were strewn across my table, bro. Look at your eyeballs; they're huge in Japan. <laughs> I am Lego. There is no Lego, only Zool. <laughs> There's no Legos, only Lego. Oh, uh, shit. Do you want me to read this thing? Yeah. Uh, on November 5th, 2020, the health protection... 
That doesn't make sense. The health protection regulations came into effect. These new regulations are the UK government's response to a second wave of Corona-19 cases in and enforce a new lockdown for England That's it. until England. December 2nd. That's what I thought it was. After the 28-day lockdown period, the government may impose a local tier system again. But there's currently no information available how this will work in practice. Thank new you. New regulations are largely similar to the legislation that enforced the March 2020 national lockdown but expand on exceptions to the headline restrictions on travel and gathering. Then there's a bunch of bullshit, you know. So it's a UK thing. It is Yes, sir. That's what I thought it was. And uh, that's kind of the implication they had. But uh, you know what that's good for? Us, because people are going to listen to podcasts more and hang out inside. So thank you. Thank you, UK, for <laughs> fucking up. Thank you, UK, for fucking up COVID uh, 1.0. Lockdown 1.0. Sure. Thank you. We salute you fucking however they do it. But thank you for finding that. The beer Googles told us that it is lockdown 2.0. Oh. This tin hat, hat is, is com- not. It's oh, staying. Bye bye. It's it's gone. I'm done. But if you were it looks to like wear, a bowl, bro. if you were to wear a tin foil hat, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to talk about some tin foil stuff, you got to go shiny part inside. Yes, shiny part inside. Keep the brain waves Keep protected. The ra- yes, the brain waves need to be reflected away from them. It has to go back to your head. So, and, and on that note, why would we be wearing tin foil hats today, sir? Uh, today's episode is a discussion regarding the Amazon Prime documentary titled The Phenomenon, or as Beavis and Butthead would say, Phenomenon, 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 and I do a terrible impression, but it makes me laugh. I was going to do an LL Cool J one. Uh, okay. Phenomenon. When I first told, uh, when I first was told about the movie and I went, Phenomenon, you mean like... <laughs> The movie where fucking John Travolta, John Travolta God has, damn a, it. has a brain tumor. Sir. I've seen it like three fucking times. It's I like that movie. Oh, no, it's not that movie. It's no. the phenomenon. Totally phenomenon. Totally different. Don't bring up John Travolta. How <laughs> dare you bring up John Travolta? It's no Pulp Fiction. It's not Pulp Fiction. And Kira Sedgwick. And, and it's not Powder. Every time I hear it's Phenomenon, <sighs> I think about Powder, which is that kid that got hit by lightning, right? Yeah, that's not... That was weird. Kind of weird. That was another weird one. It man. was okay, but then I, mm. I don't remember liking the ending. <laughs> I don't know why. But I don't remember the I'm ending. I'm just thinking something like a Phenomenon. Oh. That's... Oh, and then we got Phenomenon. 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 I didn't pull my... My hat. My you should shirt over my head. No, we, there's there will be no mid drifting, sir. No, mid, just like Tokyo mid drift. Was that second? That was the second Fast and Furious. Third. Tokyo mid drift. Tokyo mid drift. Right. Yeah. So I'm the great Cornelio. Cor- I am the great Cornelio. So uh, we're gonna get serious now, and we this documentary, the phenomenon, the phenomenon or nomina. It's it is singular, right? Phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon. No, no, no. Phenomenon. Dun 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 phenomenon dun 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 phenomenon dun 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 phenomenon yes all right it's the phenomenon the phenomenon yes and what was the subject of this the subject matter sir was UFOs correct unidentified Felicia objects Felicia there was somebody named Felicia and we had to say bye Felicia that will come up later I'm sure. <laughs> oh, me, me, Felicia and I have so mended our 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 ways. I'm so we've like, happy for you yeah, guys. Yeah, we've we've come across the aisle or something as as people on this earth. And I still say bye, Felicia, but only when she leaves now, not like prior, like to get her out. Like bye, Felicia. Yeah, mm. and then when she arrives, I say and, hi, Felicia. And I've met her one time via FaceTime. On, yes, at Halloween for four minutes. For if if that right if that. Um, so this is about UFOs. Now it's interesting. They still use UFOs in this thing because they, they reclassified them to UAPs. Correct. They did mention that. And what's the, what's the UAP? It's unidentified aerial phenomenon. And I think that's why they call, that might be why they call it the phenomenon actually, but, uh, maybe not. Maybe it's about the whole thing, but it's unidentified objects in the air that are flying. Or hovering or something, correct? Yes. Okay. Not on the ground. <laughs> Once again, not we are not saying anything other than we just people don't know what these things are. Correct. In many cases, they could be a myriad of things. Yes, or just myriad of things. Y- y- yeah. Did I say that? No, you said a myriad. 
Okay. It's I, okay. If I misspoke, no, it's okay. I apologize. It myriad's one of those weird words, man. It's a tough one. Uh, okay. So it's it phenomenon. Like... <laughs> phenomenon. So um Mr. Woodsy took some hella notes. Uh and a lot of them don't make sense because I watched this twice and the first time I watched it, I'm like the notes from the first time, I'm like, what did I even mean by this? You meant Jack, give me another drink. No, I, I was sober when I watched it the first time. Wasn't I? We, it was on Halloween. Halloween? Oh, that's when I first started drinking. Bro, you Oh I'm, yeah. Look, no, not, I know. Not that it, I'm gonna do this, bro. No, but I know. Yeah, I had was, a couple. It's all well, good. Yeah, I drank for like fucking nine hours it's straight. It was be beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. I was so giving much away that, beer like, to the, the first parents. time you ever you called out uh, for our podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I called out hungover on Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's hey, funny because it was the first time. I was like, um, I can't. I'm like, Dude, I I got you, bro. My liver's you. inflamed, bro. <laughs> In flames. Yeah, my liver's That's inflamed. That's crazy. All right, so UFOs, a UAPs. Yes. It was how, what how I found start? interesting was that. The first large, everybody knows about Roswell in 1947. That's very famous, right? But the movie barely seemed to touch on that, which I found very interesting. Um, they talked about in 1947, there was a sighting in Washington and in Oregon. And there were, they interviewed families and um, multiple sightings on farms, et cetera. As well as in 1951, there were sightings in Germany. So it's not just, it's all over the world, you know? Yes. Um, and that, because of those sightings in Oregon and Washington, they started something, the U.S. Air Force started something called Project Blue Book. Yeah. Which was, I, let me, I had it here a second ago, but you know, you made me look up Project Blue Book. I'm sorry. I did not make you look up I'm sorry. anything. I even said, don't even worry about 2.0 Cove. Yeah, Project Blue Book started in 1952, ended in 1969. So it was the Air Force's reaction to these sightings that they started that, Project Blue Book. Yeah. And to your point, the, the, the one they went to, and, and yes, we, we, were ho we were thinking Roswell would be mentioned. More but it was barely mentioned at the end. Right. It wasn't chronological, so that no. was a little confusing. <laughs> yeah, it, it was I, different. I think they went a little bit by importance and then a little bit chronological, so I wish they would have chosen a specific, a really clear route from one to the next, in my opinion. I agree. Um, not not criticizing too bad, but it felt a little cobbled together in uh, that way. Yes. It was, uh, yeah. But the big one was that one, it was at four, it was 47? Which one? The, the, that or 46 with the deputy, the sheriff deputy, where they saw the little children, the ones that look like children. That was the first. That was real... in, in Socorro, New Mexico. Correct. Yeah. 46. That was one of the ones they talked about as well. And yes. In depth. They were very, they said that was yeah. the one that broke it open or something. And it was like, what? Cause they had number ones. We'll go through the farm one and all the other ones. But I remember that one being unique. Cause I never heard that one before. No, I, I mean, I, I've, I've, I mean, I've heard of Socorro, New Mexico. I think I've been through there once, but I've never I had no idea that there was a, they, they, they interviewed a, a sheriff who saw three aliens standing outside their ship. So, I mean, that, who, how is it that no one, I mean, I th consider myself somewhat informed. I'd never, ever, ever heard of that before, ever. That's crazy. And we, we are interested in this topic. Yeah, of course. You know, it's not like we're like on board. We're just interested in what these things are. And that we haven't heard it with our level of interest in the way we go down rabbit holes is kind of surprising to me. Absolutely. I was surprised. Yes. Uh, very much so. And um, that was an interesting one. So after that, what do we, what, uh, what was your next <laughs> note on there? Or what Good did you Good thing I took all that? the notes and you didn't do shit. I'm really... I am paying, I paid very well attention. What I really, what did you find the most interesting about the Socorro case, if I may then? Well, the, the 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 sheriff saw three aliens. Yeah, I mean, and he could he described them in height and color and um drew the footprint detail. Yeah, and that he could draw the footprint, the size of the footprint. that, yeah. they, that yeah. they came across, and it was very small. He put a quarter next to it, right? So, I think something and, like that. Yeah, and it was. I mean, it wasn't a quarter size, but it was. It just showed as you know, relation to very small footed children or people whatever uh beings of sorts they said they were two on one side two on the other and then they got in and it took off or something um one looked right at him had bigger eye had no just looked right at him right didn't say about anything about the eye size no it was uh, dark yes correct okay i didn't want to i don't want to speak for the 
the sheriff. But I mean, this is a police officer yeah. in like rural New Mexico of all places, correct? Making this claim, I kind of hard to say that the guy is like looking for something, you know? Yeah. Why? I mean, why would he make that up? Right. Right. And he never really profited or anything off. No, he made, in fact, uh, they said that a bunch of people sent him like hundreds and hundreds of people sent him letters in the mail saying, Hey, I, I, I've seen stuff too from all over the place Yeah, and from kids to elderly people. Hey, I I've seen stuff too. You know, the letters were crazy. They were really heartfelt. They were, they were reaching out to, you know, someone else. And it's amazing uh, how much that, how much, like, uh, I guess, attention he got. And it, I think his wife mentioned how much it kind of bothered him a little bit. Yeah. And that's got to be daunting. Like, you're just living your life as a citizen in the United States, serving, you know, your police department, serving the people. And now you're this, I don't know, like poster child. Celebrity. Yeah, poster child for this fringe thing, right? That everybody's jumping on board. Um, That's fun, interesting. One part that I found interesting, not about Socorro, but about the other ones in the Pacific Northwest, is that they mentioned the word fleets of sightings. So it wasn't just one UFO. It was multiple, upwards of nine, I I was going to use the word aircraft, but nine objects in the sky were spotted together in formation Yeah, um, several times. So it wasn't just, oh, hey, there's a flying saucer or there's something in the sky that I cannot identify. It was nine things in the sky that somebody could not identify or a family saw nine things in the sky in like together yeah in a formation sort yeah and they use the word fleets and i remember three to nine i remember them saying somewhere between three and nine at all times almost or something yes so so i was was really surprised by the fact i had never heard of that before in in a ufo or uap reference except for like in the 90s the phoenix lights yeah which is on my list as well i think there was somewhere in the neighborhood of nine but i obviously can look it was that like up. seven but i thought that was one craft that's what's really weird I, to me. I, yeah i don't really know a well, lot about that we could we could go down that rabbit hole but sometime, that's also sure. on my list i don't think they mentioned that in the movie but don't. i because that happened here and it was on the news and they still bring it up you know hey it's yep. been the 10th anniversary or whatever the hell yep. and you know there's all these theories about what it is and how long it was in the sky and all this garbage you were living in phoenix i was in prescott sure I think you were, you'd graduated. And yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. It was 94, if I'm not mistaken. I have no idea. I think it was the year. So. Who cares? I care. <laughs> Fucker. S- I mean, screw her. I Whatever know. it takes. <laughs> um, another interesting point to that, too, is of the whole, like, flying in, not formation, but together is like, yeah, three to nine. I remember that, and I remember just uh, the, like, eight millimeter film, and you're just these these lit up things. I don't know how you could, I don't know if you could fake that or I don't know how it would be done. I'm just curious, you know, how that would have been fake back then with that technology, you know, like if you overwrote something because the film's so grainy, how could you make something clear? You'd have to make it look as grainy as the film. Yes, but I understand. There was blue sky with these white lights, right? White lights going from like right to left was the one I remember. In yes. Like Oregon, Washington. But Yeah, on the farm in Oregon, correct. How interesting did you find it that it seems like everyone starts at like 1940X, right? Yeah, like, that's on my list. They started, uh, they all started, there was multiple sightings in 1947. Yeah. So why is it that it didn't happen in 1896? And, or And Socorro was 46. Uh, 46 or 47. Yeah. So um, why is it that they didn't start in 1912? Or yeah. did, did they, and people just didn't talk about it? Or they were scared? Or they were told not to talk about it oh hey you'll be if you talk about it you'll be labeled as crazy or oh no don't don't say anything uh oh no that's just the government testing a new weather balloon or whatever you know what i mean like so there are theories to that and i i agree with the general collection that if it is because we we're once again you and i are not directly associating with otherworldly or extraterrestrial things, these are unidentified flying objects. We don't Very know simple. what they are. Right. That's we don't why know what they are. That's what that means. Right. If we do associate with an alien presence, though, like an extraterrestrial, you can almost date it right back to the to the nuclear testing. 
And the nuclear test let out a shockwave to the universe, and it kind of was a beacon going, oh, shit, we got to go back and reinvestigate. And maybe there were a lot less sightings or so sparse because they didn't have to worry about looking out after us or looking, you know, observing us if that were the case. But it seems to be right after all the nuclear tests started that these sightings increased exponentially so, in the areas of the site of the testings. Yeah. So okay. is that your theory or is that something you've read? I've read that, but I, I would come to that conclusion because it seems like right after that is when all, everyone claims seeing it. It doesn't make sense. You wouldn't claim it before. So either there were less sightings, there was more, there was more like not talking about it, which could be the case. It could be a combination of both, or there were actually less, you know, they were in different places. They didn't go to, you know, where people were. If it's that kind of, if it's connected to extraterrestrial. I just don't want to do that because we just don't know what they are. I'm thinking. I like it. I, yeah, it I don't know, man. You. I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying. I understand your point. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't know if that holds water in my mind or not. Right. That's what I'm questioning, actually. Because I'm, I'm, it seems to be that that's where everyone starts. Uh, yeah. Like 1940. Right. Five, six, right? We tested in 44. Yeah. Or something, right something before, like that. 43, 44. I, I have don't to know these think, I have to look at when Bikini Island was done and yeah. all those underground well, the tests first, in right. New Mexico. Right. The New Mexico was, the, I think, the first yeah. one. Yeah. And then they did them a bunch and they showed the number of nuclear testing. Did you see that, that? No, I don't recall that part. The graph at the end, it was like the United States had over a thousand nuclear tests. Wow. I didn't Russia know that. had nine, I think it was 976. There was like a graph. And I said, France, remember I said, yeah, Germany right, right, didn't right, even right. have, okay, yeah, Germany yeah, didn't yeah. have atomic because there's only five, I think five powers that have Correct. nuclear capability. Yeah. And it's odd that Germany's not one of them. And I, it must be coming out of the war. It must be coming out of World War II. I can't imagine because they're probably the most technically advanced civilization. Well, or a group next of people. To German, I mean, next to Japan, yeah. Right, but Germany's very scientific and very oh, yeah. technical. Right. In that, you know, Siemens and all these other companies that are very Siemens. high Siemens. Yeah. You know. Like Naval Salute? S-I-E. M-A-N-S, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. They had the to company. pay reparations. Yeah. Okay. They did. All right. So we're uh, moving forward from uh, from that part of it. Um What's your thought about that, though, in the 40s? What, 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 do, do you have a working hypothesis or something? Uh, I definitely don't like to work. Um, this I don't... <laughs> I don't... Uh, obviously, the timing is incredibly... I don't want to use the word ironic, but, I mean, what else do you want to... Uh, coincidental? So... Alanis? What, what yeah, do you think? It's what are very, your thoughts? It's very uh, Alanis Morissette, you know, because... I. I Obviously, humanity started testing in 43 or whatever, and then we dropped the two bombs in 50, uh, 45. So, and then these, these, the rates of sightings that were reported skyrocketed in 46, 47, ex and then f from there, right? So, yeah, I, I understand the theory, and I it it makes sense logically, but I don't understand why there weren't, sightings before then and i think there were there were just less or you know i just think there was to your point like a combination of less interaction because they weren't back checking us out as much and because people probably underreported, didn't have a means of getting the word out or getting people you know i just saw I just saw a UFO stop. Yeah. And they didn't even have the word UFO yet, obviously. Yeah. So I just saw something in the sky stop. A flying object. Right. And they don't even, they didn't call, it wasn't UFO until, do you have that in your note when year that was? No. But it was in the 40s or 50s when it was, it became a UFO. Yeah, I think it was in the late 40s. They called that, you know, an unidentified flying object. So there wasn't even a word for it prior to this uptick in sightings. Yeah. So I found that interesting as well. Yeah, what do you call it? Like, I, I, I would guess it would be underreported prior, unless you had cave drawings, which there's a lot of drawings on caves. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I mean, cave drawings and all the ancient civilizations have some, you know, the Aztecs, Incas, the Egyptians, etc., all have some kind of different ships, you know, helicopters that, that are drawn in or 
carved into stone that are 6,000 years old. Yeah. So why is it that they're alien references from thousands of years ago and then there aren't more in more recent human history? Right. Why is that? And then all of a sudden, did, did they leave and come back? Is that basically what happened in, in a very summarized way? Yeah. And we've got a couple other thoughts about that. I'm sure we'll get into uh, at the end about what they could be, right? Because we're going to probably question what they are. You know, are they ours, theirs, extraterrestrials? Yeah, right. You know, and then all different theories of that. So what do we have? Uh, what do we got next? Uh, the 1951 sighting in Germany. I think I mentioned that. Yes. Um, then in Australia in 67, 1967, there was a, a the entire school saw a UFO or whatever you want to call it. And they interviewed all those, they interviewed those students as adults now. And I thought that was very, they all had the same description. Obviously, they all saw the same thing. Right. So there was 20 of them they interviewed or something to that effect. A yeah. large number of them. And they're all adults now. They're all in their 60s now. And they all said the same thing. And they all had the same story. And they were making, they drew what they saw and described it. And it was fascinating to hear what they had to say. Yeah, I think there were actually two in Australia. They had the one where they had the, the drawings that landed in the end of the running trail. Is that the other one? With the older Australian, with the older Australian women, or were those the same event? Do you remember that? I, I thought there might have been two. I think you were correct. There, I think they were. Okay, um, the one to, to which you're referring was astonishing to me, because they actually said they were within one meter of one yes. of the aliens. Yes, and they said the big black eyes. They all had the same story. The children, and they were children. They were yeah, they were like 10, nine, twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine, they were yeah, little. 10. Yeah, they were they were young. Um, but they all had the same story, and they brought a psychologist in from Harvard or something to to question them to valid you know to validate whether they're you know being honest or right you know however that was. Watching the video of the of the children on the screen, the way they're looking at the adult when they're ex explaining it, they're unshakably it it looks to me like they believed what they like they believed they saw that. They didn't. Well, well, yeah. They didn't look away. It wasn't like a no. like they were making it up as children. Of course not. And then coming back, them talking about it to your point, as adults. Was, you that was to me is the most interesting part. Is yeah, very is, shocking. as adults, that was super interesting. And they all stuck to it. They're you know, and they have they're not getting anything out of sticking to that story. No, yeah, they're yeah. not getting paid, right? No. So I've, that was a really interesting one. And that seemed to be like the literally the closest encounter. You know? Right. A meter. And speaking of close encounters, who we, is that a pretty good segue? Yeah, what it is. I, I, that we, was we on my list as well. I, I Let's thought, talk about him. Um, the the, the um, gentleman, a French authority on UFOs, who I thought he, I thought he had some great interviews in the movie. He was the gentleman that was used as the basis for the French character in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which I thought was, I thought he was a great addition to that movie. It makes me want to watch it again if it wasn't for Terry Gar. Dr. Valet, I believe. Sure. V-A-L-L-E. Yeah. Oui, oui, Is it Jacques Valet? I, uh, I don't remember. Or Jean-Luc. That's one of the two. Oh, it could be Jacques uh, Gustave. We're looking for the unidentifiable frying fish. Frying fish object the unidentified <laughs> hello i am i am jacques Gustin. we are looking for the unidentified fish object that's not a great one but i'll have to work on it <laughs> wee wee poo poo i can do that uh -huh. I, can, I can wee wee poo poo all day yeah that's what i'm talking about you better get an ointment for that That guy was so yeah. i loved that yeah guy. he was very i yeah i did I, he was probably my favorite part of the movie he was very well spoken and articulate and I, I really liked him a lot. Very just pragmatic. He wasn't like, no, they exist, man. He was like, this is what we have. And he addressed the UN in 1978. I mean, it's crazy the yeah. stuff he went through. And then he had those samples. When he took those samples, was it to Stanford? And they had like a 3D, they had a 3D uh, resolution imager oh, that yeah, broke yeah, down yeah. the uh, metals that were made. Right. 
And you had a couple points about that. And I want to talk about that because I believe what they were trying to say is the metals that they analyzed were like, were built like atom by atom, almost like a 3d printer, like one layer of lithium, one layer of titanium, one layer, you know, atomically versus something that would have been smelted or, or melted together. Like we would have probably one of our processes. Where, where did they, I don't recall, where did they get that, that sample from? Um, Valet said it was, I believe it was the Roswell piece, but I, it might be the one where he said they hit it with the hammer. Yeah, that, okay. it would have been the. I think it was during the Roswell thing. Okay, because he said they hit it with the hammer. Remember, it didn't bend. It was like a foil thing. Yeah. And yes. It, right. It was, it was very, very thin. thin, and they whacked it, and it didn't move. It right. Didn't and bend I think he just had fragments of that. Yeah. Or something. Okay. So I'm I'm not 100 percent certain. Okay. But, um, yeah. 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 So that's fascinating. I I did found that very fascinating that it was constructed in a way that humans have no. We wouldn't have no idea to do how to do that. Maybe we even know how, but don't have the capability. Like, oh yeah, right. You just layer one layer. Yeah, but how do you do that? Right? Correct. How do you do the process? We don't know how to do that. Right. We might know the process, just not the application or the uh, what's that called? Execution of the process. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The know how. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's unbelievable. It's beyond current metallurgy that we know. Cor yes. You know. Correct. Um, I don't know if I want to tangent about. Yeah, you do. That, but. Bob Lazar wasn't mentioned in this, Not right? Not one time. I find that odd. Do you know a little bit about Bob Lazar? Or um, do you know? I mean, I no. I know there's a bunch of movies that he's in. I mean, documentaries or, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. And I, I, I've watched um, 15 minutes of him with Joe Rogan, but that's all I know. Okay. So, I, I mean, I that's been on my list to do for a long time. But, I mean, I keep getting sidetracked watching other stuff or whatever. Yeah, we're busy so, people, man. Yeah, full time jobs, full time podcasters. Yeah, this is just you know, it's crazy, we're, bro. We're burning the candle three ends, bro. I don't even have three ends. I don't even have a candle. I, I don't even so, like flames. I, don't even, I, I like flames. I don't even want to be here. I, I don't even like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, to that, I just want to bring that up sure, because please. just a small portion of it. When we talk about elements, the way that metal was constructed was beyond. Our under, current understanding is that kind of what they implied in the documentary the way it was constructed yes okay bob lazar claims that he knew of he had an element 115 they called it element 115 he worked in area 52 52 oh sorry well they did in mention the, in the woods they mentioned way. element 115 in the movie they did mention it yeah okay yeah so i i don't know if you know this but this would have been in the 80s i think or 70s that he was get shown it correct i don't know when it wasn't discovered in the in the world in on earth until 1990 it's called it's actually called moscovium because it was is it, it was, of this planet it well it had to be created you have to bombard oh. a current element with radiation of some sort and you can make it and the half-life is like you know one gazillionth of a millisecond kind of thing where it, like it goes it goes away just like that and <laughs> Chris is trying to get comfortable. This is why you ripped the, the thing off the arm, just FYI. You just I'm very it. rough. Yeah. Okay. Because you have dogs. That's why you're rough. I'm arr, so arr, that clumsy was a dad and joke. shit, bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, that was dad joke number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but shoot. Moscovium is element 115 on our periodic chart. Okay. And he claims that he was shown element 115 before the world even was aware of its existence or was created it. That, to me if that's true is just astonishing i didn't even know the name of it yeah i knew 115 but not the moscovium yeah i'd look that up it sounds like a russian shot it is because they they found they discovered it in moscow I, with a I russian some, with a russian yeah. guy and a and an american as well i think we could look you know we could bring google's that all day but i maybe we should do a lazar one after after we've got a couple lined up but after that right yeah because well there's a bunch more Yes, I'd have to do a bunch of research. Oh and, yeah, you know. Yeah, there's uh, there's one there's a great documentary called Area Fifty One, Bob Lazar, uh, on Netflix. Yeah, so that's that's, in that's IQ one I recommend. It yeah. has been for a year. Yeah, that one's a good one. Uh, he's an interesting guy, but we can continue with the phenomenon because I just want to talk about the element because it was one of those another interesting tick-ons. I'm surprised, you know, that they touched upon as well. Also, Tambia. 
Also, all of the tambourines. The tambourines are in full force, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What do we got next? Sir? Uh, they mentioned how there was a, a UFO sighting. I think it was it was in the U.S. Was it Montana, where there was it was over a ICBM missile silo? Yes. And then the Malmstrom Air Force Base. Right, and the Malf- um, Malmstrom. It basically shut down the the U.S. Air Force's ability to launch nuclear missiles. It, it disabled ten of the missiles. I right. They it didn't. Said. They didn't lose power, or but they they were unable to fire their missiles if they wanted, if they needed to or wanted to. Yeah, it was and shut I shut down found that like a, a a red beam came down from the ship, and it I mean it looked like a laser beam, or well the reenactment. Look like a laser beam, but it, I mean, it obviously, I don't think it was a laser beam, but it looked like one, but I thought that was crazy. Yeah. And that was a dramatization. Of, of course. course. Um, but, but the, yes, to your point, the, uh, the observers, the eyewitnesses stated that a red beam came down from and shot into the silos or something. Yes. And it just disabled the ability to launch the, 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 a nuclear missile. Yes. So, but it, it didn't. I think it's crazy that it just disabled them from being able to launch, but it didn't, it didn't knock the power out. It didn't, that's what's weird is that to me, like if it was an EMP pulse, all the power would have been out. Correct. And I thought that was super interesting that they just, the way that, that it happened. I would also wager a guess that those silos possibly are emp shielded oh and the reason they would be in my opinion is if there was a nuclear attack and one landed near the place yeah it wouldn't disable our ability to shoot yeah that's a good point so i think emp is almost ruled out okay in my opinion i just don't know yeah no that seems very logical and yeah but how you know they some guy mentioned the light was like a data upload and you're like that's hard for me to wrap my head around, even even with like my breadth of sci-fi love. Why is why? Because a light can pull the data from and shut something down, like with a light. Well, I know you can transmit data and information through a light, but how do you penetrate the metal that's in the silo? Right? It wasn't like the silo's open. Like here, shoot on me. You know what I mean? The but thing we was can closed. send information through walls and shit, dude. Yeah, with Wi-Fi, but yeah. I'm saying, but the ha- like, how did it hack? You know what I mean? Because like those systems are because they have punch te- cards. They have old... technology that humans can't comprehend. Right? If yes, if it is that, I'm just I'm just questioning how. Right? Like, how would this be done? To your point, we don't we don't think it's an EMP because it didn't act that way. Right? Yes. So yes, I'm like, sir. what is it? Like, how how would it download via light? That's just that that's amazing you mean that, like how does the technology work yeah okay and, and just ha- if it if that is true and that did happen right and they had a they had a what was it a conference in 2010 or some kind of press presser uh where all the all the top scientists talked about yeah we didn't have let alone one let alone two go out ten. we had 10 go yeah. out yeah, yeah, yeah and they had that was that whole thing with the bell the blue backdrop that yeah the press conference yeah, with the all the guys that worked there that uh yeah. All, the all, the world, silo, actually. all the missile silo launch officers that had been retired and stuff, and they all they all came forward and talked about how crazy it was. Yeah, and they talked about the um, the one in England was the largest missile collection for nuclear arsenal for the United States in Europe, and how there was green there was like a green light they showed shining into the silo. Yeah, right. Down. So it was just weird, the inability to launch, or they had to manually abort or something. And one, I think one almost triggered it, and they had to manually abort it. I remember them talking about it in that way. So that kind of seems scary. Uh, Terrifying. Have you ever seen the video of the missile that they're doing a launch, like an ICBM test, and it looks like an object comes flying in, shoots like two lasers, and the thing blows up on the launch pad right as it's about to go off? I'll show you that. That's interesting. Oh, man. It's it's interesting, but it's hard to you know it could be doctored. That's all. Oh, of course. Yeah, but it is just interesting. Like, oh, what interesting timing! And it was a, I think it was an ICBM test, and they're like, you know, there seems to be a lot of that people jumping on that weird band, not weird, but that bandwagon of oh, they're here to you know because of the nuclear thing, kind of to the point earlier, and that seems to be a general consensus. But I feel like it's gotten carried away a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know what the whole intention would be, you know? And the Pentagon has stated that they say they claim to have vehicles not of this earth. They haven't shown anything, but they actually put a presser out six months ago, something like that. So that's interesting as well. We need to come back to that point. Okay. Would you like to just expound on it now? Would you like to know more? Yes, I would like to know uh, more. Tell I, I, me more. Sure, I'll just go ahead and jump the shark right now then. So you're, you just stated, yay, us, go team. Uh, you just stated that the government released a press, <laughs> had a press release six months ago that they have an aircraft not of this earth. Uh, first of all, why am Correct. I hearing about this now? Second of all, why isn't the world freaking the fuck out? Why didn't they freak out six months ago? Why was that not on CNN and Fox and ABC News tonight? And that's there's proof there's aliens, bro. If yeah. that's true. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, the press release could have been a lie. I, it could have been a tactic. It's from the Pentagon. OK, wait, it could have been a lie. It could have been a tactic yeah. to go, hey, th th look over here. Don't look over here. Right. So they could have been the shell game, right? Like, oh, hey, bad shit's happening over here. So we're going to tell you we have an alien spaceship or that it's I'm just saying it's right. possible, not probable, right. but possible. Specifically, while, while I ex while specifically I, what happened with that, while I expound on your expansion, can you just type in Pentagon vehicle, not all of Earth, this Earth, and you will find this article. Um to your point, yeah, it's very important. This is what the trend, though, is. Look at 2017. They start releasing the Navy footage declassifying the stuff, right? So first they say, oh, we see it on video, right? Then they go, oh, we saw a closer on video. Oh, we saw a really close up, and now we have one. Doesn't it sound like they're trending towards explaining that we probably have been in communication in some way? Yes. That's what, that's what I come to. So you believe that... I think they're slowly... Like dipping our toe in the water to acclimate to the temperature, the cold shock of, hey guys, we've been, we've actually been visited and communicated with these fucking things. Hey, my dad's birthday, July twenty fourth. Oh, it was about six months. Well, how about that, July? Happy birthday, Dad. Cesar. C. What was his middle name? Armando. Oh. But don't I call like him that. Armandito, or he will freak the fuck out. Because he's a little Armando, dude. He fucking apparently apparently somebody called him, called him that when he was little, and he <laughs> and he didn't like it. Like a nickname, like Armandito. Yeah. Because it's like you know everything little is yeah. Tito, right? And he fucking hated that shit, dude. <laughs> um, wow, that's interesting. Cesar Armando. Uh, New York Times, July twenty fourth, twenty twenty. No longer in the shadows. Pentagon's UFO unit will make some findings public. For over a decade, the program now tucked inside the Office of Naval Intelligence has discussed mysterious events and classified briefings. Let me see if I can find the part about them having a craft. Yeah. I think you have to beer Google's vehicle, not of I, this earth. I did. Oh, okay. And it might be another. They might have buried it again. So maybe it got pulled. I don't know. However, sir, with two things going on that were very important, uh, allegedly, in America. Yeah. I don't think that you. I don't think that UFOs and UAPs were on anybody's radar. <laughs> Get it? Not on anybody's radar. Ha! Dude, That's dude, like shh. dog dad joke too. Quote: Not made on this earth. Top secret Pentagon UFO task force reportedly expected to reveal some findings. That's what they claim. See, not made on this earth is, like I said, it's not saying it's not claiming an extra, but it's not of this earth. So obviously, it's somewhere else. I find it interesting, but I, what are your thoughts on that? That they're slowly leaking little more drips and drabs so that we don't war the worlds and jump out of buildings like we did in 19. Was it 39? What? I think. Yeah. Whenever I'll have to look it, it up. It was freaky. And I actually, I was thinking about that this morning because I wish when I wish I had asked my dad about that because, um, my dad was alive in 1939. Really? So, yeah. He was 16 years old. So hang on. Let me, I want to make sure. How what? is your dad that much older than I? My father was 46 when I was born. He's an old okay. fucker. Yeah, my dad was 34. So, so my dad was super old. So. Got it. Yeah, definitely. So he's 12 years. That would make sense. So he, my dad was, um, if uh, I'm trying to look it up. Hang on. Yeah, totally. War cool. of the Worlds. 
Um, anyway, so it's, it is interesting though, that we talk about these things and the government is slowly starting to declassify. And we'll talk about where I found, what I found interesting too, uh, on that point is you saw a Republican congressman, and then you saw a Republican congressman. Then you saw the Senate majority leader who was a Democrat, right? Harry Reid. Oh and yes, you, you, that's in my notes so too. You, you yeah, had yeah. Republicans and Democrats. This was a this was a, a nonpartisan issue, right? Like it's not like Republicans said they don't exist and Democrats said leak the information. You had people from both parties, both wanting to expose the truth, and that's odd. It speaks to the power of the actual information that both parties are interested in that being. I think that's a great point. Declassified. Yes. Because we hardly have come across the aisle recently, right? It's like we don't agree. Left and right don't agree on pretty much anything right now. Um, but to agree on. <laughs> Except some, for aliens. Except for aliens, you know, or unidentified flying objects. Hmm. Smithers. Hmm. <laughs> War of the Worlds Excellent. was done by Orson Welles. Ah, uh, yes. Sunday, 8 p.m., October 30th, 1938, as a Halloween episode. Wow. On CBS Radio. So my dad was 15 years old. So I and I regret not asking him, hey, do you remember that? Hey, did you hear it? What did you think? What do, did, I mean, it caused a panic because everybody thought it was real. Yeah. So did you think it was real? What did you think? You know, that sort of shit. So that was before, because 38 was before, um, was before this, the Nazis invaded Poland even. So it was before World War II even started. It's I, crazy. I, be very, I would, I would have, I, 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 sh I wish I would have asked him about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I heard stories of people just losing their minds. And um, I think that I think we'd be a lot more. Obviously, we're further along than we were. If, you know, look how much we at least grew up with the technology now, right? So yeah. we're probably not as freaked out. I think we'd be freaked out, but we'd be more scared and not unsure than like like what or what are the intentions? Not like oh my god, we're all gonna die. But I think people would be very curious and fearful of what you know why they're showing up. Yes. It's an interesting, I think Stephen Hawking said it. I think I said it to you last night when we were watching it, but um, hardly ever is the quote unquote lesser civilization okay when a quote unquote higher civilization comes and visits. Bad things usually happen. And not to the high, quote unquote higher yeah, civilization. Yeah, to us. We're yeah. going to get squashed right. like ants. Just like, just like uh, the expansion of the Americas, right? Just like the expansion, you know, all those types of things, the quote unquote higher civilization impeded their will, imposed their will, right? As it were on the lesser quote unquote, lesser uh, perceived civilization. Yes. Astrophysicist and former consultant for the UFO program, Eric Davis told the New York times he gave a classified briefing to the defense department agency in March of 2020 regarding quote, off world vehicles, not made on this earth. End quote. That's freaky. That is so freaky. So uh, to go back to your point about the releasing l bits of information slowly over time to prepare the human race for, hey, we've been t talking with aliens for X number of years. Hey, they live among us. Something to that effect. I, I, I think that's an absolutely plausible theory. Absolutely. It would make more sense. It makes sense now to do it. You know what I mean? I yeah. Think, uh, to do it and to do it that way. If you were going to do it, not like, Hey everybody, let's go from zero to a hundred in 2.8 seconds. I like that though. Yeah. It would be fun. That's be but see, I'm a deep ender. Yeah, I, we, I, I don't, oh. I don't want to tiptoe around in the fucking shallow end. I want to jump in and go, fuck it. If give me, been, give me all the information. If they've been here, what fucking why not why would we want not the full information because Cause they've it, already been here what it, good is, you know because what I mean? you and i are different bro so uh, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that can't handle that information so since we're already on the in the deep end of this fucking conversation yeah <laughs> we're always in the deep end. well you know this i would assume we'd get there at the end of the podcast not oh. in the middle of the podcast but oh, that's are fine. we already at the end no not even close oh well then 
Do we want to circle back? No, or, or it's fine. Fuck it. Thought? Fuck it. I think we can be inter- entertaining in, at any point of the podcast. I concur. <laughs> um, what are the ramifications if that theory is true? <coughs> Excuse me. What are the ramifications to the human race if in the next five years there are more announcements by governments around the world saying, oh, hey, we've been working on with this new technology. Hey, we have 5G because we reverse engineer alien technology. Hey, we have AI because we reverse alien engineer da 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 da. Yeah. And then hey, we then in 5 years they finally make the announcement that this is Fred the alien. That's a really good question. What are the ramifications of, to the human race? The one of the questions is how are, how hard are the current power systems in place going to fight that? Because that will destroy any power they have left. Don't you think every power system is going to fight that? Yeah. So, so that's why I'm wondering why it's taken so long. I'm wondering if they've just been combating it and now it's just reached critical mass and they can't keep it in the bottle anymore. Right? They just can't sit on it anymore or fight it. But I, if I were a, a you know, if I were one of the systems in place controlling everything, one of the banking systems or whatever, I don't know if I'd want alien technologies and all these other things that make everyone's life lives easier because kind of the struggles where I profit. Well, I mean, not, not is 5g. Why, why, why Verizon profits? Yeah, well, it's the next thing, and they were the first one to get it everywhere, right? So they're going to have a market share of that. But I'm talking about any technologies that take away, like, we won't need debt. We won't have needs like that. We will each get a replicator in our in our kitchen, and we just type up what we want, and it creates it atom by atom. Oh, you mean like food? Yeah, food or, or whatever. Anything, hey, I need right. a new table, and it'll make one for right. me. Right, but like food would be the perfect one because there are starving people in the world, right? Yeah. So you address that first, then you address cleaning the environment up, then you address all these other technology. You know, uh, re you know, obviously reusable energy. That uh, if it is extraterrestrial, if it is alien in nature, and it's a conscious alien being. Um, they obviously have gotten further than we have and can make technologies that don't require batteries or propulsion, right? Like the whole thing about propulsion is interesting because you yeah. have to f- shoot something out the back to make it go forward. Yeah. That's, that's how our stuff works. It doesn't work any other way other than if it's on a track and then it uses, you know, other kind of motion. But for flying, it's shooting something out the back to make it go forward. And burning and burning it, right uh, internal combustion engine correct is oh, there another way to do yeah, it, yeah yeah humans have we've pigeonholed ourselves into that being the only way to move forward in flight right and then you hear about these objects that go boom boom like that at full speed yeah. without any effect full stop full yeah. right which is not zero to x yeah that's like not a that. human ability Correct. Yeah. And, and even that, even if it, the, even if we could make craft that could do that, the body inside. Correct. Would. And they talked about that on the movie. The G's would just destroy us. Correct. It actually makes me think why, if it is aliens, why they're smaller. And I think that's part of the solution because they have less extremities to worry about blood rushing to Mm -hmm. the areas. Plus, obviously I think they have some kind of inertial dampers. I would assume. I think the ship is, it is handles the g's for, to not put the pressure on the body of the agree. pilots i agree 100 percent on that as well yeah but i'm just saying the sm- smaller yeah, size would uh, also make sense uh, of course in, in addition Absolutely. to that yes because they've yeah. always wanted short pilots like they always like pilots like five four to five six good thing tyson was six six <laughs> well, he was a kc10 <laughs> pilot well he could have he he i know he but was I'm max saying, height for a right. pilot yeah yeah he could have chosen anything, but, yeah. but I'm saying like, it would have been much more challenging pulling like an invert. Can, yeah. can we go through it? <laughs> a 4G inverted dive with a MiG-28? <laughs> At what range? Two. T- two meters. It was more like one, one and a half. 
<laughs> oh man, I love you, man. That's great. But right, I mean, it just it it, it was funny because when they talked about the size, I'm like, oh my gosh, that also makes sense a little bit with the G stuff. Maybe the dampers work to a to a large extent, but you still have some forces exerted. Yeah, no, I told yeah, I, and I, when they said that, uh, when when a pilot they interviewed said that in the movie that you know the number of G's that that uh, that a ship going a thousand miles per hour makes a full stop and then makes a left turn that you it would just it would separate your face from your skull those weren't his words but that's that's basically he used a different terminology yeah. but that's basically what would happen it'd be it'd be a what's the heavy metal song it's Ooh. <laughs> separate your face would, from your skull. that would be a cannibal corpse song sir <laughs> that's great um in addition to that uh you know what what are the space people what are the space launch rockets now is it 7g or 17g i think it's 7g when they launch straight uh, up straight yeah well out actually out yeah but yeah but we're not going to talk about that right um yeah is it seven i think it's constant like seven g's wow and they're just accelerating to a speed from zero to something they're not going from to a dead stop and then in a millisecond correct and or a right a 90 degree turn correct. in a millisecond that is that's forces that just you get smushed in and okay so there's nothing for you, can, we, you need to do something give me a favor for our listeners that don't understand what a g is why don't you explain that okay so one g is one times the effect of gravity so S sitting in your chair sitting in your chair is one g is one g Say you jump up and land down and you feel that force that you have to absorb. It's 1G plus whatever you lifted times gravity. So it's one point whatever G. Um, race cars experience it going around a track. I think the indie people are up to 4G now. Wow. I didn't know like that much. Three, I think they were like starting to pass out. They had to rev limit. Oh, I didn't know that v. either. I thought. I don't want to speak to her. I think they were up to like 3.8 G. I Just could get him a G suit. Um, yeah, but it's sideways. It's lateral G, not always down. No, right? no, so, I understand. Which e is, either way, you can still use a G suit to help yes. keep it from passing and out. I'm sure the suits probably have some kind of inflation or some kind I of I don't know, but they yeah. should. They should, for sure. Um, but it's so instantaneous because it's just around the bend, so or around you know each turn. Yeah. So it's not always a constant Correct. thing. Um, but it's it is instances of so basically imagine seven times your weight being pushed you've ever gone on a roller coaster or something where you get accelerated and you get pushed back in your seat you take off in a car you're obviously experiencing that's not even 1g when you're like accelerating forward that's not even close to 1g it feels like some force but it's not 1g it's not a lot imagine your full weight going that way how fast you have to go to do that um i think i think the astronauts are 7g but i i I might be wrong, but I just remember that off the top of my head. But pilots have experienced up to 9, 10 G with, yeah. with these suits. And then what they do, the reason it's a problem is because blood then goes the direction of the pull of the gravity or of the Gs. It so leaves your head. It could leave your head, leave your extremities. So you don't, you know, you lose feeling and things like that. So these suits pressurize and try to hold blood in each portion of the body as long as possible. And zero G means you're floating. And yes. negative G means you're coming out of your chair. Yes. Right? It's correct. Okay. Yeah, like coming out. L yeah. Because floating would be just be a constant, but a leaving away from it would yeah. be a negative, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how that works. And pilots are trained to withstand nine Gs. And that usually nine point X is where the best pilots in the world start to pass out. And the world goes gray and they pass out. Yeah. And, and that's where you, you could die because you don't wake up before the ground hits the aircraft. <laughs> I like that the ground hits the aircraft. Well, that's my favorite part. You know, you know it's, it sucks when the aircraft hits the ground, but when the ground hits the aircraft, then you know you're really in trouble. Yeah, it's a little worse. You're not getting away from the ground. No. You can get away from the aircraft, but you can't get away from the ground. The ground is the issue. Uh, I have no fear of falling, but I hate hitting the ground. That's correct. Yeah, to that point, um, nine Gs, and that's with like our thrusters and rockets going maybe a thousand miles an hour, thousand knots. Uh, well, whatever what's it the is, top. I, I mean, it's Mach, Mach two. Well, I mean, uh, I think the Superbird, the SR seventy one Blackbird, oh, that did like seven be, Mach seven. Yeah, that's yeah. But imagine going Mach seven to zero. That's, right, that's but, really the problem because that thing's flying steadily at Mach seven, so it doesn't have Gs exerted on it. 
only the acceleration up to seven Mach seven is actually any force that you right. Feel. But they've also the SR seventy one was at a super high altitude. Oh yes. So there's no air up there. Well, the other thing too, to I apologize, it's not literally a flight thing. It's not like a maneuverable aircraft. It's really meant to go straight and fast. Correct. Whereas like a fighter jet would experience, to your point, more of the Trying. 9G because you're going fast and then banking and then in that steep bank as you're turning, That's it's pushing issue. this way against it. Yeah. So sideways is the issue. Right. It's basically leaving your head, right? Just yeah. out down your feet. However, that would happen. Um, but if these craft do what they do, holy mackerel. Ramifications. Uh, <laughs> Ramifications uh, if aliens are walking among us. If they have solutions to fix that they claim fix all our problems and we quit as a, as a species too early. Imagine, what does that mean? If we I'm gonna, quit yeah, I know, as I'm gonna, a species too early. I'm going to try to explain it. I kinda, this is kind of a Kanye West thought. Oh, um, God, it's why? Not, no, it's not his thought. It's, it's broken up the way his mind works. That's what I'm trying why? to explain. Why? Don't it. ever mention him. I have to. No, you don't. Yes, Just say there's a I guy. Do. It's broken. Um, I will hit you. So this is what I'm thinking. I get president elect Biden becomes a president, gets inaugurated. He day one, they're like, you know what? Let's just tell the world. So during his inauguration, he invites the space federation <laughs> to like front row seats next to the queen, <laughs> for example, right next to the queen of England. And he's like, Hey, what? come. Well, cause the is queen Kanye there. No, queen has the best seats, bro. At Wimbledon. Yeah. But she, she gets anything she wants. She and, wants to sit next to aliens during Joe Biden's uh, inauguration. And she has dolphins. I'd want that. I'd, I'd want that. Of course, she's part of the power structure. Uh, she might not want that. So he invites them over. They go, we are here. We come peacefully. They, they're they speaking spells, right? And they just pull their string. <laughs> um, they go, we can solve. We can solve your debt. We can solve your food. We can solve your environment. We can solve your energy. We can solve every fucking problem that you that that the world has. Right? People watching that go shit. I ain't. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. It's solved. Did you just give me a kissy, smushy, fishy face? I did. Ah, uh, that's for the video, ladies and gentlemen. Fishy, fishy. Um, does that make sense? So. They watch this and they go, "Oh, all our problems are solved. I don't have to go into work tomorrow. I don't have to clock in. They're gonna, they're gonna feed me. They're gonna give me money. They're gonna give me all anything I want. I can get." And the whole thing collapses because we just quit. It's permanent vacation. We just fucking quit. And I can actually see that happening, which I'm, is sad. I'm super excited about this. But the <laughs> quitting would. But it wouldn't be good in the way that we quit because it there wouldn't be the thing in place yet. Remember the remember when I talked about it's like you can't remove a system until another system's ready to fill in its place. Yes, the the system that they talk about isn't. But we already quit the system, the current system, right? We're fed up with the system. Everyone on control. Don't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. Oh yeah, you actually are the boss of me. You pay me money. Well, I don't need your money anymore. So screw you. Go pound sand. I quit. Like the whole, I could just see the world going into some immediate chaos, for lack of a better term. Well, so, would you foresee like, riots and no, just 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 waiting to be to be given something, and then it turns into riots and violent violence because everyone gave up, and now you're trying to protect what you have. Do you? What do you foresee from a religious aspect? I don't know. Would people become more devout? Because, oh. More or less, right? It, I mean, it literally would they run to church less. or run away from church? Well, it's one or the other because you'd either well, be. Well, which one? I, well, I don't know. I would guess that they'd run. Well, many would run. A, well, many of the people who are already doubtful. Doubting Thomas's, perhaps. My favorite apostle. What um, up? Would run away because they're like, well, the Bible's just for Earth. We've got other, er we've got other beings out there. Obviously, God's bullshit. 
because it only speaks to the earth. And then some people would be like, oh my God, I need God to save us from this or something because they still have this myopic view of something. Personal opinion, but what are your thoughts, sir? Because you asked the question, so you must have a thought about that or you just want to continue chewing for now. You already know what I think. I, I want you to share. Bro. Are they going to run to or away? You tell me. Let me swallow my granola bar. Okay. And I'll, I'll take a, I'm going to have a Scipio tasty beverage to wash it down. May, may I have a Scipio? When I was beverage? making the bed the other day, your stupid voice rattled around in my head. My girlfriend has a duvet cover, which means I have a duvet cover. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend wants a duvet cover, which means pretty much means I want to do. I don't have a duvet cover because, <laughs> uh, and I started laughing. I was making the bed. And I, my girlfriend has a duvet cover, which means I, and I started, I don't have one. I, I, it's unfortunate that I even know what it is. Okay. So the question, <laughs> I believe people will, will flock. They will run to their churches and, 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 and bow down and get on their knees and pray and because they they are looking for salvation and go oh my god there's aliens and we're not alone in the universe and and please jehovah save us allah save us jesus save us all the you know whoever your god is save us protect us Please don't let these aliens cause us harm. That's a good point. Where I believe that's what the majority of people will do. Do you think Christians will just call that the second coming? Of course not, because an alien's not Jesus. It's not of this world. Okay. I know. I I'm see your point, dude. You but know how how ooh. how the interpretations have changed as technologies change to try to fit these fucking weird ner narratives that How, are bullshit however i didn't finish my answer the people in my opinion people will flock to the churches regardless of denomination or w belief system however i believe the proof of a of non-earth life non in non-earth intelligent life renders all religion obsolete and shows that they are false and untrue. Uh, that's what I believe. All religions based on books written by that Earth by, is the only thing and God is the only thing. All correct? books, the books are written by a, by men. Right, but I'm I'm just saying all religions that have, for example, the Bible, the Torah, the Quran. Yeah, well, I'm, what what other religions are there? Scientology is okay. totally. You, oh you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I'm okay. just, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. And I'm, I, I'm sorry. You're. Correct. I'm trying to say there are other texts like yes. Buddhist texts are very different. True. And Hindu texts are very different from like the way God because they have multiple gods, right? Ganesh and, and you know the Hindu Hinduism has many gods, right? In a in a in an interesting way. Okay, I didn't the god know of that. prosperity, Ganesh, and all these other. But regardless of that, I'm just saying we definitely would negate those three main. That we talk the main about religions, Christianity, Muslim, and Islam specifically would be negated because of their texts. Logic dictates that they would be negated. Yes, however, humans lack logic. Right. I'm and this is just an observation on my part. I'm not. Yes. I'm not attacking anyone. Not at and, all. And for the for all the people that have faith and 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 believe in a god and believe in a higher power and they find solace in in that higher power i think that's amazing and i'm jealous i don't have that i i wish i did i'm envious of that. however i find if there's intelligent alien life logically i see that that proves the three main religions are untrue that's what my logical mind tells me. I agree. And it's it's unfortunate, to your point, um, you and I lack, basically we've had this conversation, and we could talk about it because we lack faith. Yeah, that's correct. Faith is the biggest thing. Um, I don't, you know, the, th the anecdote I brought up to you yesterday was kind of what we talked about. I don't want to go too deep in that, but um, faith is one thing we lack, and it's one of those things where, Faith can't be made up with logic. 
that's the, the leap of faith. <laughs> it's literally called a leap of faith because you have to go from something that we know is to something that you have to believe will be or is or can be. And we're, you and I just never get there in this, in this way. Correct. But that's, you know. But you think humanity would flock more than run. In your opinion, is that they would go? I, I think logically they should leave organized religion in droves, but I don't think they will. Okay. But I mean, g going back to the Catholic Church, the, the 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 very holy men that are responsible for guiding them to God sexually molest their children but yet they still go logic yeah. dictates they should leave the church, but they don't. Right. The same. So why would, why would an alien get them to leave? You know? Yeah. I, I get the, the faith part or just the dogmatic practices of it, but really, I but regret when you, even fucking bringing it up. Man. No. Cause when you step back, <laughs> when you step back, Hey, I love the question, but when you step back, if it's not of this world, there is, there are things about the Bible that they could probably manipulate to say, well, that's the not of this world part. <laughs> Cause they said be in the world, not of the world. Right. That's like, uh, one I understand. Of the, what do you know? You read the Bible multiple times. Do you know where that, that is two times? I know that's I do not, multiple. I do not know okay. where that is. No, uh, do sir. you recall that being something in the Bible? Cause I remember that phrase be, be of the world in the world, not of the world. And that's where there's like a clothing company N O T W that's like, that's a Christian clothing company or something like that. Or it's interesting. Though. Yeah. I've seen it on back of cars. Yeah. So you see NOTW is really not of this world. That's yes. really what that stands for. Yes. And that, see, that's where I'm concerned is that humans will once again, twist it to interpret force, interpret not of this world being alien, being still of the Bible. And I'm like, if you can do that, man, you've got faith. And I, I, I don't know if I can have a, a lucid conversation with you, but man, I admire your faith. It's really strong. So, I don't know. After that. What else we got? <laughs> I'm thinking. What what other so besides religion and government, what are the uh, what other impacts, what other industries would be impacted by the the revelation of alien life? Imagine the technologies that got them he, that got them here. Oh, yeah, can you do that some more, please? I'm sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. I've got a mute button, bro. Damn, dude. You yeah. need a foot rub? Do you see how serious I get on these on these knocked consciousnesses? <laughs> Did you like when you said Legos and thens, eyes, addeds, uns, s's, twos, everys, words? I never knew that Legos was incorrect until I, last fucking week when you said, dude, that's wrong. I corrected you, Ty. I, I didn't say it's wrong. I said it's Lego. I didn't say it's wrong. I just said it's Lego. I didn't know this, but but now you knew, and then but, you hurt but, my feeling yesterday. What a, what a great audience! <laughs> what were you building? What were you assembling yesterday? The beginning of a Star Wars Imperial Star Destroyer, bro. <laughs> and it just happens to be in space, man. Whoa, Whoa. that Star Destroyer is not of this Earth, not of this world, world, bro, or something. Well, it's it's a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, far, far, far eons, far. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> we at? the other implications imagine oh my god how did you get here what is the energy source what's the propulsion what's that? our whole world our world would change i i can't imagine that they don't have some kind of renewable energy source that we could use forever or some kind of reactor that runs off of zero point energy or some kind of draws from another dimension or something like imagine the the technologies that how much it would change our current world I think everything would change. I honestly feel like we would not need anything from anyone, but that's the that's kind of scary because then where's our purpose? Like, what do we do? What about that? is what would there be health benefits? You wouldn't, you would never get sick, man. You just go right to this thing. You get a scanner in your house and you just lay in it and it fixes you. I, I I'm just I so don't know how far these the, technologies would, are. Would the pharmaceutical industry just be like, bye? Yeah, but they wouldn't need it because no one would need currency because everyone could get everything. <laughs> or at least that would be the that would be the sense, right? Yeah. Everyone would get everything. So greed has to go away cuz you can't not I can get whatever the fuck I want now. And that's a concern to me because I feel like 
we would just we honestly would quit too early We'd be like oh everything's taken care of you know uh we take the easiest path and then before we know it it's not exactly what we think it is and then we're behind like now we're fucked because we we created this like vacuum and then we have to crawl our way back out i don't like that that i know i, I seem nihilistic sometimes but all the time i the dark energy is stronger than the light man i'm not gonna lie it's not true it's more powerful negative okay they're equal sir no it's the yin and the yang dude it's, they're not equal they're not uh, well then we disagree I love that we disagree. That's why we're so amazing together. <laughs> my God. Oh my God. We should like, we love together for more years. years. I got it. More years. Um, have we beaten that religious horse to death yet, sir? We're not talking about religion. Oh, we're, that's right. We, we've done pharmaceuticals. Well, what about you? What, what are your thoughts on the changes? Because you asked me. I, I would love for you to expand I on I think there would be thoughts. fucking anarchy. And how so? Draw out the picture like of, of, of the... Of how, you know, how they're presented to us and then tell me what happens. Like, draw me, tell me the story. I, I believe that government officials would, are, did, or would be sitting around a room and go, yeah, the humans can't, Americans can't handle this. Humans can't handle, if we tell them that there are aliens that are intelligent and we've been communicating with them for X number of years and, okay. They couldn't handle it. The, the, that's all. That's the, that was the. Well, end I mean, of the like, okay, so they present the aliens, and then they, and then humans do what? Like, I don't think they would want to present the aliens. Okay, so you think they they just would keep just it be like, yeah, possible. they would. I think they would cover it up for as long as possible because the humans can't handle it. How would aliens come, or how would extraterrestrials come to be known by everyone? I think some they journalist would just, or what? It, no, I think the extraterrestrials would just have to reveal themselves to a non, to a normal fucking dude, a farmer in Iowa. Like maybe Jesus, Jesus maybe Jesus. Yes, an alien would, would reveal himself to Jesus. If and if the alien revealed himself to Jesus, could that be the second coming of Jesus? It, it literally it could be but no <laughs> only if he came with the holy breakfast more. burrito well only if it was covered in the holy spirit oh god here we go down that road the holy spirit fill you um okay so with the flesh you think just anarchy we be we couldn't handle it is what i, you're I think probably yeah I, okay. I think there's a percentage of people maybe 10 15 percent of the people that would just freak the fuck out and it would just be looting and rioting because oh my god there's they're aliens it's the end times suicide yeah like increase, oh it's over and they spike for a bit a yeah and raping and pillaging and and I idiocy you know because humans are dumb man we're, we're, we're base creatures you know uh toilet paper yeah and ammunition I still can't understand why people didn't get bourbon and fucking steaks, but okay. Well, they needed something to wipe after they ate the bourbon and steaks. Well, then, but anyway, okay, yeah, they didn't buy bourbon and steak, dude. That's the thing. That wow. was in that was in plenty, in abundance. Abundance. We of had steaks. a plenty. We had steaks and bourbon of for plenty. everyone. Isn't that funny though that we ran out of toilet paper before we ran out of fucking alcohol? That we have that if much. it's the end of the world buy the alcohol i'm buying something else well yeah i'm going to oregon yeah let's <laughs> did you see my one tweet someone said uh i've been getting addicted on these podcasts but i go check ours out we're the only our podcast is the only drug not decriminalized in oregon <laughs> <laughs> that's funny dude i'm like we're not decriminalized in oregon that's how addictive we are oh my god yeah it's just funny I don't know. You're funny. I crack myself up, man. Rightfully so, sir. Anyway, but yes, what do we do, man? We're just freak out. We're 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 doomed. Is that um, what you think? We're doomed if if they show no, their faces. I don't think. I think a certain percentage will freak out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I don't think everyone will freak out. I mean, I won't. I'll admit, I'll be scared. I mean, what do I have to be scared about? I mean, well, if they if they if they. If they're not here peacefully, then what am I going to do? Yeah. Like, well, run, run like to the a, hills. Yeah, like run to the hills. Run for your life. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm gonna, 
I'm, I'm going to get my dogs and get some canned food and head to the mountains. Yeah, Tom Cruise War of the Worlds, and right? I mean, what do you Red do? Dawn and shit. Well, I'm so, just thinking Tom Cruise War of the Worlds. Yeah. Where they just zap them and they turn in like fucking powder, right? Yeah. And you're like, right. what the fuck? Yeah. Like, I'd be scared and running. I mean, just the human in me. I don't know if I just sit in my room. Maybe I would. I'd probably kill myself. I'd probably kill myself. I, I know it sounds weird, but I'm, I'd not, probably, I'm not too worried about it. Like, it, okay. if there's aliens, there's aliens. And you know, there yeah. are. I mean, Look, right? I'd love to meet my people, so I'm totally, right? I'm totally good, man. I'm looking for a Syrian. I'm looking for serious I mean, XM, liquid metal. Don't get me wrong. Meg Z, I, I am in love with you, and we are together, and we are together forever. But um, uh, some Syrian piece of ass comes in. I don't know. Don't put that cable there, dude. Not this Mine. One. There you go. I just, okay. I feel like, I feel like Bishop. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, no one can I see have that, this. I, I have this fear of tipping things over, yes. and if my headphone cables are on the wrong side of a of flower a, of a of a glass of soda pop, I'm concerned that if I turn my head, it'll yank it, and it'll spill the soda pop. We are out of harm's way until I yes. I pull it with mine. Yeah. Oh well, then <laughs> fucking move that shit. We're good, man. All right. What what else we got? I think um, so. Ramifications. You think anarchy? I think some, ultimately, to some yeah, degree, yes. I feel like we're just going to quit too early because. We're in this weird part of the world, in my opinion, where people are just asking everyone to do to give them stuff like, uh, I, you know, an entire like a little bit of entitlement. Yeah. Um, like we did. We earned it just by be by breathing. I don't know. Well, that's uh, how I am. Yeah. Like you don't work your fucking ass <laughs> off, bro. Come on, man. I'm sorry. I'm, and it's not critical to any specific people. It's just we are humans. And if we get the easiest way out, we'll probably take the easiest way out. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. So that would cause a problem, I think, in some kind of vacuum. Yes. Words. 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 Shit. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Damn it, damn it. Oh, poop. Ramifications. Yeah. Given up. Entitled. Quit. You work your ass off. I'm just I'm just gonna dissect your brain now, bro. Because you got CTE, man. I, I do. I know. I feel for you, man. Because you know, I think I got a little bit too. But, what um, was I gonna say? You're talking about ramifications, how it's gonna affect the world. Oh, okay. That's thank you. That's not. It, it was a sub point. Um, so, what do you think about the theory that? Hollywood has been preparing us for 65 years for the revelation of alien intelligent alien life because of War of the Worlds and Independence Day and all a Predator and every single alien aliens, all of these different types of alien movies. And there are a thousand, you know? Yeah. Is 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 that in preparation? Is that to oh is that so that it won't be such a big reveal if it is revealed? Is that the is that the hey, we've been slowly preparing the world by making it a normal thing. A, a normal hey, come coming this Friday, the new Alien seventeen movies starring Sigourney Weaver, rah, whatever. Is it just another because we've been desensitized. That's not the right word, but I can't. Yeah, that's. I mean, what, well, there's no other better. There's no other word for it. You know, I. It could be. I know that sounds so like wishy washy or no. non committal, but it could be that the government did say, "Guys, start putting out movies with this stuff." I also have a thought that some of the people who put out the stuff know about it, like they're aware of these things, because. I think a portion of the of the world knows about these things like the elites and if they shared it with some people they could make movies like nine of them or you know one where <laughs> you know that kind of stuff yeah bum, 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 close encounters bum, yeah bum. and star wars and star wars i, kn I knew yeah, what you exactly. were referring I to know. i wasn't I trying got to be you. coy but yeah i, I figure i just say for everyone else they're like what the fuck's nine nine movies nine no 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 19 nine is a movie but um, it's not about aliens. it is it's not it's a tim burton 
no. thing. Yeah. I thought nine was with uh, that's seven. No, sexy kidding. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, the nines. The nines. The nines. Excuse me. Nine is just the number yeah, nine. That, weird, that was, that that was, that was weird the Tim weird Burton. la la la. I, uh, I Nightmare guess. After Christmas. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. Don't the like dream that, after Christmas. Yeah, I'm, I agree. Um, to that ex- to that point, um, it could also be that they said, "Hey, put out these. Put out put out sci fi stuff. The more you put out, it wouldn't hurt just in case these things are real or." we do know they're real and eventually they're going to be outed. So normalize it to your point. I could totally see that. Do I know that that's 100% the case? I haven't seen paperwork. Well, of course said, not. Right. But I mean, you've seen evidence in other things where, you know, where they deny it or, Hey, make sure you don't talk about it. Or like the pictures. Let's go to Roswell real quick. Sure. Hashtag real quick. I think that thing is called a quadrupole. The actual hash symbol. So I I would like to adopt quadrupole. I'm going to look that up and confirm it, but I think that's what it's called. I'd like to use that instead of pound sign, dollar sign, or number sign, hashtag. Pound sign. Sure. Pound cake. Mm, 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 mm. Where'd you put that, uh, by the way? Where'd In you my put, drawer, because I need a frame. Oh, bro. I don't want it to get messed up yeah definitely not no. so i need to get a frame no i love you took a phenomenal picture of it when we put it up yeah the eddie van halen yeah and we tweeted everyone We're like hey everybody check hey, out the this world cool, hey the world the universe from off all the aliens knowledge. check out eddie's pick hey aliens check out our check out our transmissions from this world yeah <laughs> um yeah so to that end we were talking about what exactly again i don't know Oh man. Mine's was beer today. I don't even like you. Um the aliens. Oh, about movies and how they impact or or if they were designed. What are your what so do you, do you think? think I, that, mean, I love your questions cuz I know you, you have a thought about think it. So that, tell me. You think it's hiding in plain sight basically. It's possible that 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 was done. It's it's possible that they did it that way or that some major players know of the existence of these things and then made things similarly to because we're just engaged by it. I mean, we're intrigued by it, obviously. Look at the ratings or the sale, you know what I mean? Look at all the box office stuff from, those, yeah. I mean, from look at things. that, that horrible, amazing show on NBC called V. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, isn't there an alien race that's supposedly lizard-like? They're reptilians. That's what they y- claim. Right. And I don't really know much about them, just that there may be one. Yeah. The claim is that reptilians are one of the bad guys. They're they're like one of the, you know, medulla oblongata type things, but have advanced. And allegedly, they claim ver- people in high positions are reptilians, and they have some hologram that makes them look human on top. See, I didn't I, know any of that. That's a, I'm just stating that some people have that opinion. I'm not adopting it. I just know I liked that show V when yeah, I was v a kid. Yeah, V was really cool. And then the guy, he pulled his face off and it was green. Here, mouthy, mouthy, And he mouthy. had the tongue. <laughs> and, uh, and oh yeah, Freddy Krueger was in it. I just yes, remember that. Yes, he was. Remember? Yeah, and, Robert England. And, oh, and yes, and Beowulf. Oh, that's Mark cool. Singer, or what was his name? Falcon, Falcon Boy. Falcon Beastmaster. Crest. Beastmaster. Beastmaster. That's what it was, right? That was Mark Singer. Beastmaster. Sure. Um, and Michael Ironsides was in it? Yeah. Oh, I fucking love He's that He's in guy. everything. He's in everything sci-fi. If you get the weird... <laughs> Starship Troopers, man. I know. Rico's Rico. Rico. You're, you're, uh, you're my new sergeant. You're my new sergeant until I, until I find somebody better until or, you die, or whatever the <laughs> fuck he says. Until you kill you. Uh, or is it until you die or until I find somebody better? That's it. Um, but, um, yeah. Aliens... Bro. Bro. <laughs> I think I lost my train of thought for the 14th time, and I don't know why. Because we're kind of all over the place about it. But it, it just, it excites my mind. I just love thinking about it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how they'll come to us or how they'll be expressed. But that Pentagon thing freaks you out, right? That they cl- they even state it. They're like, not of this earth. They yeah, why, said it came Why from was that not... I mean, it was on the New York Times. It's a bad year. 2020 has been a very news-filled year, and UFOs are on the bottom of the pile. Because of COVID and because of- COVID elections. And the election and the riots. Yeah. Those things- The rough year. Those things overpower the fact that we have a a craft 
not from this planet. Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. Do you, do you see how basic humans are? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, a, I'm sorry. That's a no, no, I, I agree. I apologize. No, I, we, once we've, we've discussed before, and it will always come up. It is a running theme about our show. People either do get distracted, allow themselves to get distracted. Cause some of these things, well, how, how well do we sleep at night, sir? When we start thinking about this stuff, not well, right. And we can't turn it the fuck off. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't we be a little, wouldn't it feel good to be able to turn it off every once in a while? Of course, yeah. Some people never have it turned on. And I'll be honest, I kind of envy that. You like, you talk about the person with faith. I, I agree with you. I envy per people with strong faith and strong convictions like they have, even to the point where log it even supersedes logic. As long as it's not dangerous to me, I'm 100% on board with that person having that faith, right? Well, correct, yeah. Yeah. But to that same end, we can't turn off these voices in our heads that are going, why this? Why that? What if this? What if that? What if that? Blah, blah. If we could, we probably would be in the same thing where we would be more concerned about some of these other things that we see right through. Like no one else sees through what the way we saw through some of the events that happened this year. Right? Like we, we have a different angle. We look at from, we just look at it from a different viewpoint than, than, most people and that's why we're together on this journey man we're not together well we're on the journey sure. are we on the same boat I, I don't even like boats i took a slow boat boats and hose boats, boats and hose. hose all right you want to get the rest of my notes uh no okay not yeah okay. of course i do i have a bunch of words here words and i don't know okay. i don't i don't we'll do I, quick rapid fire abductions okay uh lots of them are they real what do you think about abduction? Do you think you do you think people have been abducted? Eric Cartman, eighty. Oh, it did. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it, he had an eighty foot satellite dish put in his ass. Put in his ass. Season yeah. one. Yes, correct. South I think Park. it's like episode two. If it's not, super early. It's anal probe. I think it's episode two. I think it literally <laughs> is episode two. Yes, going. I'm going ahead. <laughs> Et fuck you, going ahead. <laughs> I. I did they mention it on the phenomenon abductions? Nope. Because they're only talking about what I do like that they just talked about UFOs. Sightings. Correct. So I don't know. I don't know why I put that on there. It must have been a random thought. I think the thought is, yeah, are they mentioning abductions or what are your thoughts on abductions? What are your thoughts on abductions, sir? Well, I, I, there's been so many reports over the years. It ha There has to be. There has to be at least one. Do you think you think all these people are, are lying? All of them? I can't. I can't. I can't believe that. May I share the most boring story time ever? <laughs> okay. Would you, you really? Like you get the you're really food? hyping that shit. No, you can do it yourself. That, I, I didn't expect that, man. No, it's actually an okay thing. I've spoken about my past life regression, correct? Yeah. Okay. In my past life regression that I did, that the audio went wonky the second I did it. Um, I have notes, and I, re I have some recollections of my things. In the second life to which I went in the regression, a past life regression, you basically go under meditation with a guide, and they try to guide you into possible past lives that you've experienced. In one of them, I was number three of seven. I was a short, big-eyed Zeta, like three foot tall, looking up in a domed interior, and I was in charge of propulsion. That's what I said. It's a weirdest fucking thing I remember saying. Um, and on the ceiling, it was like a beige type ceiling, but it had black uh, characters on it. Very similar, like hieroglyphics, but yeah. some kind of alien, you know, non non language that I've recognized at, like as a human. And I was in charge of propulsion, and we either got caught in a, a we were monitoring a sun and it went supernova or we got caught in a meteor shower and we were destroyed. And I remember that very vividly going there in my past life regression. Do I know that? Obviously that's a weird thing, but I went through that and the woman, um, the woman who was doing the past life regression with me said, you've also been abducted. You were part of the crystal program and you were abducted uh, over Europe. What is the crystal program? <sighs> crystal there's crystal rainbow it's like a it's kind of um 
It's a classification of the type of beings that are coming here. Rainbows are the newest. They're the most awoken crystals uh, where their DNA can are allegedly crystallizing so they can store more information because we talk about crystals and the energy and how they store information really well and how they convert energy very well. Yeah. So that's part of the crystal program. And I was being, I was put up and I was standing there at a very young age staring at a screen and they were showing me, you know, how to, you know, things to do or what we need to do. And, um, I asked, I kind of pushed a little bit and I said, well, what do you mean? She's like, you were abducted two or three times. You were put up to the ship to watch these videos of some sort on this screen. And I remember going to Germany back in 1980 and I would have been, um, five years old, but you know how you go on a trip? It's like a week. We had German family. I asked my mom how long we were there. And I think we were there like three weeks. And she specifically said, Europe, I found that odd that she, she said that she didn't know I ever went on a trip to Germany. You know what I mean? I ever went on a trip to Germany, how long I would have been there. But imagine that over a five week period of the vacation or the trip that I may have been beamed up to. I, I don't know. It just seemed weird. It seemed odd. And that's my story. I don't that's crazy, bro. Isn't that crazy? What are your thoughts on that? That's fucking nutty. What does that make you think, though? When you, because I'm a lucid individual. Tell me, tell me, I'm fucking crazy. You're please. fucking crazy. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that's hard. No. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Like, what does that make you think I, I when I tell know, you dude. that story? Uh, I th obviously I think it's plausible that I was I, a fucking three foot alien that I was fucking abducted. Like, really? Like, what are your thoughts? Well, obviously, I believe in in. I think reincarnation is possible so i don't you know yeah and I, I as i said there's so many stories of alien abduction that i think how can you discount all of them there are thousands of stories yeah so how is the, how are they all lies if there was like seven stories i'd be like okay come on but there's been stories for 50 years from all over the world yeah i guess my question is, you know, why, 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 why are there alien, ab if there are abductions of humans by an alien race, races, why are they, because everyone thinks, oh, they're, they're examining the human species for medical reasons or something to that effect. Yeah. Like we is dissect that, frogs. Or right. Like so is that really true? You know, wh why would an alien What's the purpose of, of the abduction, I guess? And I, well, obviously, we're never going to know that. But I guess that's that's my biggest question. Yeah, it makes it's a good question. I could really go down that rabbit hole. That might be its own. You just got abducted to watch videos, so that's yeah. cool. No yeah. anal probes. Well, and to be honest, I don't have any recollection of this. I'm just going to tell you when she said that, that kind of blew my mind. But that she said that, and then I asked my mom, you know, I remember being in Germany when I was six or five, and then asking how long, because I would have thought I only stayed a week. And if a week, then there's no fucking way. Like, but over a month and change, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the possibility of that might increase. And uh, my uncle had like, a, you know, like a two homes, like, like we have Phoenix, right? And then you got like Flagstaff or yeah, the outside, a vacation where it's home. a lot like less crowded. A little cabin or something. It was a cabin in the fucking woods. It was yeah. like, but I mean, it was a second home, but it was like a, you know, it was very vacation, green, getaway. very, yeah, yeah, very forested or whatever. So it would make sense that that would have happened there. Obviously not over Hamburg, for example, right? In the city. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not subscribing to it, but I, I just found it odd that some of the pieces, puzzle pieces at least kind of shaped similarly. Yeah. Might, might fit. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting about abductions. Uh, the Betty and Barney Miller one, uh, they mentioned it very briefly. They showed a picture of them. Have you, are you familiar with that one? No, I would suggest everyone take a look at that one. That one seems to be one of the most complete, um, abduction stories. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into it, but because it wasn't on the phenomenon, but Betty and Barney Miller, you can look them up. It's one of the first ones and it's very interesting. So it's not. Betty and Barney rubble. rubble. No, okay. No, it's whole, I think that's where they got the rubble from. What a shocker! I Sorry, I kicked the file cabinet. Yeah, with my motorcycle like, to boots. You're like very aggressive today. Oh my god! What they got next, bra? Next note was Russia. Yeah, declassifying. Bless you. Um, 
how many sightings have they had, right? The declassifying valet went valet went there. He was no, uh, George Knapp was invited. George Knapp is a reporter from Las Vegas who broke a lot of the stories, actually broke the uh, Bob, Le- La- Bob Lazar story. Okay. So George Knapp is very connected to the UFO investigation of UFO things, and he is a legitimate journalist in Nevada, in Las Vegas. Nevada. Yes. Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. 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 Data, data. You know. All of the Caribbean. Potatoes. Mm, Tater tots. Uh, go cut fries. Next up was I had 1992 Clinton. I don't know what the fuck that means. That was him on the interview. He oh like, yeah. I, I just oh, right. I asked him about did they got some of the. I did not have sex relations with that woman. That's not what the UFOs are about. No, I, I did not have sex relations with aliens. Hillary, I I was innocent. I did not fuck that three foot Zeta. They fucked Bill. I got fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, he was talking about trying to uncover it. Yes, and bull, right. uh, I call Balderdash. Yeah, lies, right. I call so much Balderdash, especially from the source. I just at, how did you see how smarmy and smooth he was? The more he got so charming when he was just directly lying to us. Like every politician. <laughs> yeah. He was so fucking nice and chummy and whatever and fucking just straight up lied, bro. You know he did. And if, that was after he was president. Yep. Because you know. Have you ever, you heard that one, that one joke, right? Where they're like, and I think I told you that one, where basically it's like, um, he mentioned first day of the president. I think Bill Hicks did yeah. that bit, right? He was like, first day of the president. They show him an angle of the JFK shooting. That no one ever saw before, and they go, "Any questions?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah, that's. I wonder if it is like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some things that they can't. They just can't. That's why I'm. I'm kind of excited to see what happens in January. <laughs> I am a little bit, because that dude don't give a fuck. <laughs> Me there are UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to call them. That's pretty. They're good. out there. They've come, they visited, they came to my house. Very good people, very good people. That's pretty good. It's not bad. I'm, I learned from Jess's yeah. impression. So thank you, Jess, again <laughs> for the <laughs> phenomenal people. Uh, next uh, was uh, yeah. their moving of UFO debris in Roswell. You remember that part? I do. That's when they, they had that. Remember, it was that really thin foil okay, like that was the thickness foil that they okay. hammered. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. the deception was the aluminum foil and the wood in that room where they made the people take pictures with them. Yes. At the end, remember that? Yes, They're yes, like, yes. yeah, this is just a weather balloon. Yeah, because I had it on, it, they called, they they said they were box kites. Yes. And I'm like, give me a break, man. That's just, that's a lie. Yeah, and they intentionally knew that. They didn't know what it was, but they knew it wasn't that. For sure, right? Regardless of what it was. It definitely wasn't what they presented to us. Correct. So they absolutely lied. Sorry. Oh, that's... Bro, you're having like an avalanche. Are I, you okay? I got, I got boot okay? problems today. Or something. <laughs> 99 boot problems. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe 99 problems, but the boots aren't one. Yeah, yeah. sure. Just like that. Um, to your point, the... Yeah, it's a bullshit thing, what what they showed us, the fucking aluminum foil. And, and I recall everyone anecdotally talking about the first thing that the U.S. Air Force release was that it was an unidentified flying object, and then the next newspaper cycle, they had reprinted weather balloon goes down or something. Yeah, I found that to be re- like, that's like a fucking tweet that you did that you didn't delete in time. True. Yeah, <laughs> that someone screenshot and then fucking canceled you. Oh, that's rough. Like seriously, like how the hell did that not rear its ugly head harder or sooner or more? I- I'm confused by that. That's a good point. You would think that would have been... Right, like, people are just dumb. Nutty. I don't know. They're just busy. They're busy, man. Look, they got to look at their paycheck at the end of every week, and I, that's the only thing I could think of is that <laughs> we're just so busy trying to make ends meet, and... Mm, we don't care about the aliens. We don't have the atten- We don't have the bandwidth to care about aliens. Until or, they're on your doorstep? That that's unfortunate, and then they that become a priority. Yeah, <laughs> kind of suck, wouldn't it? Hey, yeah. let's, let's wind back that clock. What else you got after uh, the weather? Uh, I got a New Mexican congressman. 
The guy died at 51. Yeah. Mysteriously. No, he died of cancer. Car- carcinoma. And then. Um, it was a Republican he congressman. Was on, he was, was on, on Larry King, right? Larry King in 1994. Yeah. He died in 1998 at 51 and one week. 51 years old. Very young. Now, if it was carcinoma, he probably smoked. I mean, he was born in 47 and he died in 98. So he was 51. So he probably smoked a lot, but I, that seems odd. 51 to die that early from cancer. It seemed like on Larry King, he knew some stuff that he should not be talking about. It did. And he so, definitely was pushing for more of that. Yeah. And the, the transparency of it. And that was the one we talked about, the Republican. That's where it was a Republican guy. Yeah. And then Harry Reid was later. Do you have that later in the uh, notes? Yeah, okay, let's go just, down. Let's yeah. go down your list, though. So I don't no, want to go. Yeah, honey. Yeah. We'll go back to him at the end. No. Well, just because we're already on it. Oh, so, okay. yeah, Harry Reid. I also had on there, I have money presidents. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Cash money? I don't Cash know. Cash money. Money presidents. I don't know, bro. Uh, maybe ones that are on the bills. I don't know. Uh, I think it was, how did we siphon money? How did Harry Reid siphon money secretly? <laughs> From the American public to fund this thing. Yeah, but then he, after he was no longer in office, he goes and has an interview with these people. Yeah. And tries to like show how he's honest and shit. It's really odd. But at the same point, I don't disagree with what he wanted to do. I kind of disagree with how he did it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think siphoning funds illegally is pro- or secretly yeah. is probably not the best way to go about no something. No shit. But we have black ops all the time. Yeah. That they true. don't have. They don't have. But we don't elect them. True. This is an elected official. Who, yeah, 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 yeah. Who like who we asked to represent? I'm the, once again. I think it's to be honest. I, I'm. No, I can't say I'm a Harry Reid fan, but I think that that looking into into UAP or UFOs it w- is important. And look at all the declassified shit that happened. Now we've got the the Fravor video. You haven't gone into that yet. We'll who? Get, we'll Which get video? This. The Dave Fravor video. The uh, Tic Tac. We've got the gimbal and the tic tac. Those are the two new ones. Then the back, the yeah, ones that's, that's the last on my yeah. list. Okay, let's go down the. What's after anything the, else on Harry Reid? No. What's after the congressman, the, uh, the New Mexican guy? I have astronaut crashed crafts and materials. Huh. You got anything on that? Didn't Gary Cooper was the astronaut? I think they were talking about. I believe so. And he claimed that he saw that stuff possibly. I don't want to speak for him, but I think that's what that meant. Sure. I love speaking woodsy sometimes. Yeah, because I don't know what the fuck I was talking about from Halloween. <laughs> from That was uh, the fourth Drunk Jack. Night. That yeah. was a Jack FO. That was a unidentified flying liquor. It was an unidentified flying Jack Daniels. Well, I guess it's technically it that would be identified, identified as Jack, Jack Daniels. Yeah. So, um, it was an IJD. The last on my list, besides my own questions would be uh the navy close encounter yeah which is that that's the david fravor right is that the tic tac tic tac that's the tic tac and the gim the gimbal was on the east coast the tic tac was on the west coast so those w- the gimbal was that black the thing it turned black that turned on its side yeah it was going they didn't go much in in depth in that fravor does on like joe rogan some other podcasts so basically as well. to summarize there were two Encounters by Navy jets, separate encounters, um, in the last five time. years. Yes, within where they, within two or three years. So yeah. they they have the video from the jets of UFOs, and they're showing the abilities, the flight abilities that they couldn't keep up with. Is that summarize it? Very well. Yes, they these things appeared and how they appeared. The Fravor interview seemed odd to me when I talk about cobbled together. Like I love that he said the word shit and like almost said the word fuck. That was pretty funny uh, because it. May, I mean, it's a human. Like holy shit, what is that fucking thing? Like, oh, he was in the cockpit when yeah, he said it. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he even said shit like in the interview. Yeah. He got excited. He's a lot. He's a little more reserved when he's in a long format conversation with like he's been on Joe Rogan. The one I'd recommend. Obviously, the Joe Rogan one's great because Fravor's great. He's just a, you, he's like a colonel. There, he's the most stoic individual. Like, there's no need to make this up. But he was he was a Navy squadron commander, yes. right? and fighter pilot. Yes, okay. high high okay. level. Yeah, he was the top of his of of the squadron. I think I think he was the main squadron or whatever, the lead head the top squadron guy. commander. Yeah, the commander, correct. Um, and as well, but the one I'd really recommend is Lex Friedman. 
Um, he, he is a very interesting guy. He's been on Rogan before, but he's done one where he goes into the, like the actual, like logistics of the craft, how it does, what it does, what it did. You know what I mean? Not just, Oh, look at that thing. Yeah. Right. And he's brilliant in that. So, and Lex Friedman's a brilliant man as well. So I'd recommend that one, but I felt like that took away free, uh, Fravor was so much better in some of the conversations I've seen in the interviews. He seemed excited and fun, but it made it, it, it felt like less legitimate that way, in my opinion. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. Cause he seemed more like fun about it than like these things, um, kind of came out of nowhere and they kind of did, you know what I mean? Like he wasn't as serious. It didn't seem as serious about it. Uh, as I, I would have probably been, I think, but he seemed more serious in the other interviews. Okay. Gotcha. What are your thoughts on that? What did what did you think when you saw the Tic Tac one and the Gimbal one? Um, it was hard. I, I, I it was hard for me to make out what I was seeing because it was you know it was a it was a black and white video and w from a from a fighter aircraft, right? So I was more entertained by the pilot's reaction. And what they were saying and how they were trying to stay focused on the UFO and not lose sight of it, you know? So I, I, I had to watch it a couple of times just to try to understand exactly what I was seeing. The real-time reactions of the pilots, yeah. to your point, yeah. are astonishing because how many pilots react like that? Yeah, holy shit, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they'd be like, that's a MiG. Fuck. I like there's a couple that they'd probably be like yeah. that they would think that they'd shit their pants about or be really excited about. Right. This is definitely one of those moments where they show their excitement. Now, that's the other thing I one of the issues I had with the phenomenon is they didn't show enough of those two videos. I'll see if I can find is it longer like seven versions. minutes or something? Yeah, but they only showed like 20 seconds yeah, of but, the TikTok and stuff. It's amazing the the different uh, different modes they go through. They actually break down the different modes of the video they go through. Fravor does as he's switching over as his his. I don't know if it's Rio. They said WS. It's a different title now. But well, it's a two seat F eighteen. Correct. That's a, that's a training aircraft. No, I think I think that's a Super Hornet. No, a Super Hornet's a one seater. They said they said it was his WSO, right? It wasn't weapons it a two systems WSO weapons right. systems officer. operator. Oh, Na officer. Yeah, may I think we're maybe gonna maybe maybe I'm all right. I'll, I'll have to. Look I know up. maybe I'm wrong. I think the fifteen is a single. It and is sixteen is a single, and the eighteen is a single. It, I think this possibly because it's a super, maybe the Super Hornet went to a two seater, possibly because it's more systems are bigger and fat maybe okay. faster. We'll I don't know. Up. We'll look it up. Yeah. Uh, to that end, though, he said that, that his guy was switching over, and they were trying to switch different modes, TV mode, thermal, whatever. Yeah. And the the long video is way more compelling than what they just showed on Phenomenon. Phenomenon, I, I, I felt they almost did that a disservice, if I were to, quote-unquote, criticize. Yeah. Uh, I, I see that. what you're saying. Yeah. Because the gimbal one was very interesting, too, and the shape of it matched the pictures that were taken all the way back in 1950s and whatever, 40s. Uh, what we never talked to the McMillan farm or Mc, Mc, McMinniman, McMillan. Yeah, yeah, Oregon, right? Oh yeah, but yeah, the actual did. farmer taking the pictures, right? Right. And what it looked like and how it just matched. So many pictures had sim very similar. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, what's that? What would you call profiles Shape. or shapes or yeah. uh, silhouettes or, or you know? Yeah, or, yeah. So, all that shit. All, all the profiles. All that shit. Yeah. Those. Yeah. The, it was. It was really impressive. All right. The the comparison between the Oregon farm in 1950 and the, or 47, whatever it was. And, you know. <laughs> the nipple. The, the, the damn Navy pilot from three years ago. Nipple. Uh, I remember the one where the guy took the picture in Europe when they showed him the book or whatever. His picture and the McMinniman or McMillan yes. or whatever. They looked. It was like identical. I, they looked identical in my opinion. I mean, it. it it's hard. It's hard to just. Some of them, they didn't all look like each other. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but multiple look like each other. 
through many different times, black and white picture, color picture, video, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then you see, you know, some stills that were very similar to other craft, but similar to each other. It's amazing. And, and what does that make you think? Do you think, uh, is that all your notes before we, uh, before no, I ask or before you ask more questions? Go ahead. But I want, I have two more things, but go ahead. Go please. Well, I they're, they're not my notes from the movie, just my notes. Nope. Uh, just your general. Um, I wonder if Tyson ever had any encounters. He, I mean, he had 20,000 hours in a KC-10. So any of our pilot friends, yeah, like, you know, and we I, have but, a lot of pilot, but friends. you know, he was a pilot. I think he got his, he did something before he went to flight school. So I don't think he started flying in the air force until like 96, something around there. And then he retired in, I want to say in like 2014. So 18 years of flying. Yeah. Um, did All he over ever, the world, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. He was, yeah, Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean and, you know, Sarajevo and, right. you know, all, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's not just flying from no. like San Francisco over to the LA. Poles. Right. No, I mean, he's, yeah, he used to, he, because he was stationed in New Jersey, so he used to fly to the UK all the time. So I'm wondering if he ever encountered anything and just didn't tell me because it was, you know, in, in 96, it was a different time. If you saw something, guys didn't say anything you could lose a lot yeah you could get escorted out of the air force yeah i mean i didn't even i'm curious if there was ever like a section eight for that i like they could yeah they i could don't section eight you just for that i don't know it's a for those what's claims. section eight uh i think that's where you just go they call you insane i just oh. i watched full metal jacket not that long ago on disc. Is that what it is? 51. That's a police code <laughs> for someone that's insane. Right. Section eight is uh, the one where it's like, I'm just going to go section eight. Okay. He went section eight, went crazy, I guess. It's, I think Charlie Sheen tried to do it in Cadence where he put the eight balls on the back of his hands. Okay. Or whatever the fuck it is. He was in there for drugs. Drugs. Are you in here for tattoos? Yeah. Eight balls. That's I, I'm curious if Tyson ever. So am I. I'm I mean, he, to... I mean, 20, you're talking over 20,000 hours in, 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 a, in the cockpit of a KC-10. You know, to anyone we knew at Ember Riddle, yeah, uh, pilots and those alike, shout out, please let us know. Hello to the world. You haven't, you haven't Do you think it? he did? I would not be surprised. I, I mean, mathematically speaking, he was up there and he had 12, 16 hour flights. You know, he would do these flights where he would refuel other jets. Then he would go get refueled by another KC-10 and then keep going. So, and there would be two crews on board. So he would go sleep and then come back. You know what I mean? Like, so he would tell me about these incredibly long, long flights. So it seems just mathematically that he had to have seen something. With you know? what he went, with the things he went through though, not mentioning that to me would be surprising, but you knew him better or you knew him best of anyone. But I didn't really think of it until recently. And I, I know that that's another regret I have. I didn't ever ask him about that. Yeah. My dad and now Tyson too, but, um, it's a good question. My last point is, uh, the same question I asked before. Why isn't everybody talking about the fact that there's aliens? I let you answer it first. My math, okay, once again, mathematically speaking, there are billions of planets and billions of stars in our galaxy, and there are billions of galaxies. So the, the mathematical possibility that there is intelligent life in the universe is a near certainty. So Intelligent or just life? Intelligent life. Okay. The fact that there's another race somewhat similar to humans that has the ability to contemplate their own existence is is very 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 high why isn't everyone talking about that because we're too busy with our own shit like going to the mall yeah we're wearing too busy. a mask well we're too busy like you know throwing molotov cocktails at courthouses and trying to make stands and trying to make is a it, difference is Say, it really that simple is it no i'm being serious i, I think is, it is. is the answer really that simple is the, we're, we're, is the human race too worried about our stupid mundane shit to ask the big questions? Is it, is, is it that simple? It's my opinion that the majority of all of us don't 
have a foresight to care what's next. They only look at what's right in front of them. To your point, like yeah, them coming at your front door, that would negate me. Like uh, people not know, you know, caring about wildfires. Yeah, because your house isn't burning down, right? Okay. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they report it, but it's you know what people aren't like that engaged about it that aren't directly affected by it. You hear it, but we even with us, we're in a state that has a lot of forest fires every year just because of the the heat and everything. Yeah. And you know, it's just like ah, it's another fire fire. Right. It's kind of like, I don't know. That seemed important to me. Um, this seems like an important, but maybe it's also that like you and I love going down these rabbit holes and we love being curious and it's not, it's so not even a thing right now to worry about. It maybe is that far down. We're just, we just think it's more imminent because we think it's important. I would also think that And of course, this statement seems logical to me, but it, it, it may be the most illogical statement ever. I would think that humans would want to be nicer to each other because there is are aliens. Hey, maybe we shouldn't be such dicks. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that may be the farthest thing from the truth. Well, as evolved apes, <laughs> we still have. I know you're um, right, dude. We have territories, we are alpha, you know, there's the alpha mentality, all these other mentalities. And as we get more technologically advanced, as we become more, uh, as everything's more readily available to everyone, as that grows, I believe we are, well, we should be culturally pushing that, not pushing it down, but not like not needing that to be a thing, right? Like not repressing our things but it shouldn't even be an issue for territory like why am i fighting you over a roll of toilet paper i don't need to do that uh dave Chappelle had his netflix special and he talked about that he goes this he was in this little community in ohio that he lives where he's like a farm thing he goes we're the last place that ran out of toilet paper because we trust that everyone knows whether they need toilet paper or not like the whole and it's great in a really small world right it works great like we talked about in communities yeah in small numbers we have when we know who we are there's a no is it the dunbar number that is how many people you you can actually stay in contact with or know very well and it's like 100 people 150 people tops i mean it might be as low as 20 people that you can say you know really well yeah outside of that there's 7.7 .7 billion other people you have to worry about right and you don't know them the way you know those of handful course, of people. Of course. So I'm curious how, you know, that plays into it, right? Why, why we are dicks. Cause it becomes a territory thing. It becomes a, that we let the medulla amlagata take over or whatever the hell is back there. You know, the, the primal shit. Yeah. But we should, we should be more con. That's why this is not conscious. We should be more conscious that we know that and just say, we don't need that not to repress it. We don't even need it. There's no need for it. Right. So it doesn't even need to be repressed. It just atrophies. It should atrophy and break off. It, it shouldn't even be fought. And I think to you and I, we don't really fight it like that. You know what I mean? Like we, we see it, we see other people acting and we go, holy crap. I can't believe they're being so whatever. Dickish. Yeah. Don't be a dick, bro. <laughs> and the excellent to each other. Oh, we exactly, to do dude. I have a question for you, sir. Go. Multiple crafts, yes or no? From the pictures, do you think there are multiple types of crafts? As a helicopter flies over your house. Uh, yes. Do you think that's then multiple intelligent lives, not just one? No. I think it's the same species, but I think there are multiple species out there. Do you think there's only one species that have visited us yes really yeah for all the possibilities yeah with all the spiritual stuff with the pladians and the arcturians and the syrians i don't know anything about i don't know about those last okay. two uh the arcturians i don't know arcturians uh well there's a there's a sect of the spirituality world the wind chime uh fruit loop people i love fruit of loops. which i'm hey i'm i'm kind of part of that uh sirius is is a planetary system that they say that is one of the life forms. I'm curious if you think it's just one life form. I, I, yes. 
Interesting. I have no idea. I'm totally guessing. Right. What makes you think it's just one if they're, the crafts are different shapes and so I feel well, like it would be different. That, that, I thought about that during the phenomenon oh, because okay. yeah, humans have it. F-18s and humans have B-52s. So we have totally different types of cars, yeah. trucks, e e houses, everything. Why can't aliens have different types of crafts? to do different functions like humans do. I totally thought the same thing you did. I just thought I would ask that question as well because there's one of two things, right? Could be the one is uh, studying ones to disable like missile Nuclear, silos. Yeah. And that's the that's the gimbal looking thing. And, yeah. And the, and the Tic Tac is designed for underwater yeah. research yeah. or whatever, you know, something like that. Yeah. Very good. Very excellent points. Just curious if you thought it was more than one species. I personally would believe if there's one, there's many. That's my opinion. Okay. Because just to your point, and we, we, I think we're going to do a uh, knock to conscious about that. I want to talk about the Drake equation, which I mentioned yesterday, which basically tells you the possibility of intelligent life in the universe. Okay. It's a pretty interesting, it's just an interesting thought, kind of a thought experiment. It's not a direct equation where we have to actually do math, but we talk about each of the parts. I think that would be fun to break down. Okay. What else you got? Anything else we got That's today? It. Cool. Um, final thought? Uh, be excellent to each other and party on dudes follow subscribe rate please um, we're approaching we're probably over no, we're well over 6,000 downloads by now but please subscribe rate subscribe rate subscribe rate review subscribe rate review not conscious please dot com dot com dot com he's out don't be a dick <laughs>